Yeah, hello and welcome to my today's review, or let's better call it an issues report about the Lilliput 6 Extreme monitors. By the way, at this point, I also want to mention that this video is also usable for, or let's say, according the 664 monitors, because the panels seem to be the same, the panel driver, the hardware panel driver it seems to be the same, and there are also a few issues which are the same, so um, yeah, take this video as uh, for the 664 and the 663 models. Um, as you can see here, I have the 663 monitor here. Um, it's uh, to be precise, it's the 663 slash O model, so without the advanced features like histogram, peaking. Uh, by the way, um, we, uh, according the, um, uh, the naming, uh, the slash O stands for the HDMI out, the slash P stands for the advanced features, and um, the slash S is, for example, um, for the SDI um, input output option which isn't built in in this model here. Uh, and there is also a new model, for, by the way, available. The P2 model series are available with additional audio meters, um, vector scope, um, waveform, RGB parade, and so on. But the problem is also with this model that the hardware is the same and the, issue, the basic issues are the same. Uh, and there are a few of them. Um, and as always with Lilliput, um, there is also a little. There are al always a little bit uh, problems. Um, the case with the new software features, for example, with the new P2 models, there was the problem of a red flickering of a histogram and vector scope, which is normally showing here. Uh, as soon as you deactivated it again, for example, there was always a, few, uh, a flashing um, of the histogram where the histogram was. Um, and for example, there is also um, there are also a few other smaller issues with the software, which I want to tell you in a few minutes. By the way, uh, and the software issues um, and also a few of the basic uh, hardware issues are, are also the case with the 664 model, um, which I also had in my hands already. So don't think that I am only telling it as because I saw it in a video or so. Um, yeah, the 664 model I I had the. Uh, P slash P model without the HDMI out for shortly and I can tell you that it also was a mess. Um, for example, there was a yellow hue issue um, as soon as you activated uh, one of the advanced features like the histogram, the peaking, um, any, any uh, of the features. And also, for example, there was always a, a factory setting reset as soon as you used the peaking and I think it was the peaking. Um, and so in general, the V664 models also are not recommendable. I, I mean, I don't think if they fixed a few points uh, till now, but uh, for example, this one here with the issues, also with software issues, was produced uh, in November 2013. So it's really not that old, this model here I have, and there are still a lot of issues with the monitor. Um, so I don't think that they fixed everything and uh, by the way also the problem is um, that you always need to buy it directly from Lilliput if you want to get uh, firmware updates and you need to send it back to get firmware updates. So it's, it's quite a, a huge problem if there are software issues and if there are problems with your monitor because there are a lot of dealers um, on eBay for example which are selling the Lilliput monitors and there is always the risk that you get an old model with the first uh, firmware, for example, or with, uh, a, in general, faulty more faulty firmware. Um, okay, but yeah, let's continue with this review or let's say issues re report, as already mentioned, because otherwise I'm talking <laughs> too much. Uh, well, as you can see here, um, it's the 663 model. I, I can tell you it's quite stable. It's very rugged. Uh, this is made out of, of metal, for example. The, here is the Velcro for the sunshade. A telelight, quite nice. Um, here are the uh, input select buttons, the uh, function buttons you can freely assign, um, the um, calibration buttons and menu buttons, for example. Um, everything quite nice and sturdy, I have to say. Here you also have a headphone out, which is quite nice. Um, here at the back, I already mounted uh, an NPF 970 battery. Um, I use normally for my uh, equipment in general with external battery plates like this one here for example and uh, as you can see here at the back it's also quite rugged um, it's all, all made out of metal I think so it's also quite heavy um, here is a huge pro um, of the 664 which is made out of plastic uh, although the plastic uh, is not that st uh, stable it's way lighter and yeah this one is really really heavy especially if you use a bigger battery at the back 
uh, as you can see here, um, it's the uh, slash O model. So without SDI option, you get uh, component inputs, composite inputs, um, audio left right inputs um, without protection because these are BNC connectors, by the way, and these are normal uh, change connectors. Uh, or, it's, or Tinge, how it's called. And here you can see the HDMI in and the HDMI out. The HDMI out, as I already mentioned, only with a slash O model. Here you can see the um, XLR port for the power. And yeah, well, that's it more or less uh, about the exterior. Uh, but I want to tell you um, that I don't like this XLR and I will show it uh, to, to you in a few seconds when I show you the accessories. Um, yeah. Here's the uh, power port as mentioned, and yeah, well, that's it more or less. But uh, one of the huge problems uh, according the coding is, uh, for example, and I, this is my personal preference or my personal meaning, uh, opinion, let's call it that way. Uh, it's really, the coding is quite annoying because it's really like sandpaper. I mean, you don't see every fingerprint on it, but if it's dirty, it's very, very annoying to clean up because it's really, really rough and, and yeah. <laughs> You, it's not possible to clean it with, with paper at all, uh, with a paper cloth, for example. Um, and even with, with a textile cloth, it's quite uh, annoying because it's really def, that um, shaped like a sandpaper and yeah, quite annoying. Um, and I also want to mention, this is a problem in general with uh, also with a 664 model, also with other models. Although f f the funny thing is uh, with the 5D 2OP, it wasn't that stiff and so it, it wasn't that of an issue with this 5D2 model because if you want to remove a battery, and uh, I can uh, show you this, uh, for example, I remove a battery, okay, and the problem is, as you can see, um, you're not only removing the battery, you're also removing the battery plate. And the problem is with the battery plate that there is no locking mechanism, no real locking. There, there are only these two pins which are too weak. Uh, and it would have been uh, 10 times better if they also uh, invented a, a screw-on type of, of a battery adapter with a cable to the XLR port, for example, which would be also okay. Because then, yeah, the battery plate um, would be stiff enough and would uh, withstand everything. And as you can see, now I can remove a battery and I can assure you that this battery plate uh, will wear out quite um, fast because, yeah, this mechanism here is way too stiff and it's very hard to remove a battery from, from this plate. I mean, it's nice that it's that stiff uh, sometimes because the battery is really locked into place, but it's idiotic or it's, it's a, a misdesign to make this that stiff and this uh, not not stiffer or make don't make this as rugged as the battery plate itself. By the way, there uh, is, uh, are also other battery plates available for LPE6, for example, for um, QM91D or how they are called from Sony. This is the NPF battery plate. Um, uh, but yeah, these are the two issues about the, the hardware. Um, I, I really don't like um, the coding and the battery plate. And also uh, the third one uh, I forgot um, is the XLR adapter. And I will show you now why I, I don't like the XLR adapter. As you can see, by the way, um, there is only uh, the XLR port and no DC plug which is quite annoying because um, I'm not the only one who is using, for example, such um, NPF battery holders and they're all equipped with um, 2.5 DC jacks and there is no option to mount it directly. And so, yeah, you need the accessories, which are, yeah, here. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, and yeah, the case is quite nice, um, but uh, it's no use if the, the uh, monitor isn't uh, as you wish. Uh, here uh, you can see the power adapter, um, which is uh, the XLR plug adapter for the monitor. The problem is that they um, that you always need this 2.5 to XLR adapter. Also, if you want to use it on on a AC power, so on the, your normal house power. And uh, the, the really annoying point is that they didn't include a, a XLR uh, AC to DC adapter because it it would be yeah very nice to have such an adapter. And although you, you then miss the feature of the telelight feature, and I think these cables are for the telelight, um, it's, it would be still better to have such an, an XLR adapter because the XLR adapters are nice because they can lock in place and you don't need to uh, think about the stability of the plug. But then to adapt again to a 2.5 jack, 
why not um, <laughs> put it on the uh, device directly? And also quite annoying is here that you you have free open wires. Uh, I mean, they are only uh, for Vitalilite, as I uh, already mentioned, as I think they are only for Vitalilite. So um, there is no uh, risk to for a so short circuit, I think. Um, but still quite annoying. And especially if you want to use your uh, monitor on a rig where you have, for example, as I already showed you, such a external battery plate with a 2.5 cable, uh, you always need this bulky adapter. So because there is no direct 2.5 uh, plug on the monitor, as you can see here. And this is really, really, really annoying, really. Okay, uh, what's also included is, um, as I already showed you, um, beside this adapter here, a normal AC to DC adapter. I think it's an international model, yes, 50 to 60 hard um, adapter. Uh, 100 to 240 volts, yes. Um, I also have got uh, this QM, I think it's a, yeah, yeah, QM91D adapter, it's uh, he printed here. So it's also for Sony batteries for the smaller ones, for, uh, which are normally included with camcorders, for example. Uh, also included is this Allen wrench, uh, which uh, you can use to adjust, for example, this ball head here, which is also included to mount on your uh, camera hot shoe or on the cold shoe adapter on your rig, for example. Also included are these keys which you can uh, use to lock the, the case. Very nice, and uh, it's bad that the monitor is in general not usable for me at, at least, uh, is this uh, cloth textile type sunshade, uh, which I like way more because it's using Velcro, it's very easy to mount, and there is no risk to, to, uh, that it's breaking, um, for example, in your bag or so, like uh, uh, hot plastic sunshades for example, which are the case with um, the 5T2OP model from Lilliput, for example. Also, um, quite nice is that there is um, a manual included, although it's not that detailed, by the way. And it's also nice that you have uh, space, for example, to put other parts in here. Although, yeah, that's it with according to accessories, um, because I want to show you <coughs> the points I really, really also don't like about the software and about the general performance. Um, okay, so that's it about the um, first part. And now I will hook up um, a borrowed uh, Sony VG30 to the Lillipod monitor. So you can see uh, about the issues I'm talking about. And um, yeah, let's continue. Okay, so let's continue with the second part about the software issues, about the image problems um, I found with the 663 and also so on the 664 model I had. Um, but before I continue to show you the 663, um, I also want to mention that, for example, about we um, mentioned issues, the battery issue, by the way, um, so the hardware issue, battery hardware issue, is also the case with the 664 model. And the problem with the 664 model is also a little bit um, the stability of the case, because here you, ha you have really um, a metal shell and the, the case is in general very, very stable. It's, I don't know if it's really hot plastic because it really feels like kind of a, a metal. Um, and uh, yeah, the 664 in comparison is quite unstable. So also think about it um, for what you're using these monitors. And um, yeah, although as already mentioned, I don't recommend them in general. If you really want to buy one, um, think about the usage. Okay, um, so let's continue with um, this uh, 663 monitor here. Um, as already mentioned, um, or as I said a few seconds ago, the image quality is not um, that good on the screen here. I mean, the uh, screen itself um, is quite nice because it has a high resolution of 1280 by 800. But the problem is, um, first, uh, let's begin with, with the panel. Uh, yeah, the problem is a, a, a big, huge uh, over sharpening issue. And um, I will show you now, um, or you should see now a picture, let's say it that way, of this 663 monitor um, uh, while using the GH2, where you can clearly see the overlays are, uh, are extremely over sharpened. And the problem is, uh, and this is quite real, quite annoying, it's really, really annoying, that the monitor isn't equipped with a sharpness um, adjustment. Uh, so there is no option in the software to adjust uh, the, the sharpness. 
and so it's uh, it's completely useless um, if you really want uh, a one-to-one -one image reproduction because you always get an over-sharpened image. I mean, uh, for example, with the over-sharpening filter where you want this, um, this uh, uh, feature, uh, like with the H056 I already mentioned in, within the first part, uh, and which I'm using, by the way, as already mentioned, uh, actually. Um, there you can switch it on and switch it off um, if you need it, if you want to use it, if you need it for focus pulling. And there even uh, the picture is better uh, to pull the focus as here with the, with the standard over sharpening. Uh, so keep in mind that here the image is always over sharpened. And for example, um, and this is a good example, I also hooked up the H056 and this monitor here together uh, on two separate ports um, onto, uh, at my, uh, my computer. And I adjusted uh, both monitors to the same settings. Um, so uh, both monitors were recognized as uh, separate monitors. And I can tell you that with this monitor here, with the 663, it wasn't possible to get a one-to-one -one pixel output because there is always the scalar um, in between. And it wasn't possible, it wasn't possible with 1280 by 800, it wasn't possible with uh, 1280 by 720, it wasn't possible with any other resolution to get a one-to-one -one pixel output. There, are, um, you, you always had a weird um, uh, scaling uh, and, and uh, squeezed image or uh, a stretched image. And for example, compared to the H056, there you just um, output a 720p signal a native 720p signal and it's recognizing it and you get a one-to-one -one pixel output and you get an image quality comparable to a computer monitor which isn't possible here because always the scalar is in between and you always get an over sharpened image. Um, yeah, beside that fact um, I also want to mention that this screen here um, and here is also the H056 10 times better at least and sorry that I'm always comparing to the H056, but uh, yeah, it's one of the few monitors which offer the same resolution, which are priced around, around the same, uh, yeah, or let's say, which are lying in, in around the same price range and uh, which uh, is also offering quite a good image. And um, to get back uh, to the 663, the huge problem here is also um, uh, backlight bleeding. And you can see this backlight bleeding even with a normal standard image as soon as you're um, shooting um, a darker scene, for example, or if you're shooting indoors. And the problem is, um, and you, I will show you a picture in a few seconds, I have here banding, here banding, extreme banding, uh, not banding, sorry, extreme bleeding, color, um, backlight bleeding, and also in the edges here at the top, but extreme it's here and here. Um, and the problem is, um, that is really visible and the problem is because this is a 16 to 10 screen like with the H056 um, You always get a, a, a Black bar at the top and at the bottom if you want uh, the right output the not non stretched output Actually, and this is uh, uh, by the way um, now you will also see a picture of the of the backlight bleeding um, I know that it's maybe a extreme situation um, and but I, I wanted to show you how um, the, the backlight bleeding is compared to the rest of the screen. And well, yeah, the problem also with this monitor here is that, for example, uh, and this is kind of a trick from, from Lilliput, I think, um, it, the trick is that they always switch to full screen as soon as you um, input any signal. Uh, for example, this one is now the native signal and this is the standard setting of the 663. Um, which is uh, delivering, a, I think, 1080i, 50i signal with VG30 in the auto mode. Um, and the problem is you always get a stretched image. And this is, I think, a, a tactic, a tactic from Lilliput because then you don't have black bars. And then you also don't see the quite bad um, panel quality about, uh, according to the, the backlight bleeding. And this is quite funny because, for example, you can, uh, and I show you this now, you can readjust um, the aspect ratio to 16 to 9. Okay, 4 to 3, 16 to 9. And as soon as you do this and you're um, shooting a darker scene and uh, maybe you can see it already here or so. Okay, no, this, that's the light from, from the bottom. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you saw in the picture uh, a few seconds ago, um, you definitely see this backlight bleeding here and here, um, especially if you're shooting indoors. Um, and 
that's quite annoying. And this problem, by the way, is also the case with the 664 model. The backlight bleeding is the case, the uh, over sharpening issue is the case, and the next point I also wanted to mention is the uh, way to, uh, to um, offset standard calibration, which is also the case with the 664. The problem is that the saturation is way too high, uh, and by the way, it's not even possible to calibrate these monitors with SMTPE, or how they're called, charts. And uh, for example, again, the H056 there, um, it was possible within a few seconds. If you know what you're doing, um, it was possible in a few seconds. Although the colors are also not perfect with the H056, here they're way more offset also, by the way. Because here, for example, I had the problem um, as soon as I tried to calibrate it uh, as good as possible um, and uh, also adjusted the colors properly, the problem was that the, the red, the color red, was um, about the same uh, as the orange. And th this is quite annoying because you, you, you cannot trust this monitor at all. By far not trust this monitor. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm, I have here a few points I wanted to show you. Uh, yeah, well, there are also uh, problems with the scaling because as soon as you switch, for example, the scaling to the 16 to 9, as I showed you before here, uh, the problem is that uh, as soon as you use, for example, uh, a pixel to pixel mode, with the pixel to pixel mode, it's still working. The uh, 16 to 9 aspect ratio is still there. But as soon as you switch back, it's again full screen, as you can see here. It's again stretched to, to full screen. And um, I don't know if this is really a, a software issue or if it's a tactic, <laughs> so the, you don't see the bleeding um, of the screens. Um, but as you can see here, it's back to full screen. Yeah, and you need to switch back to 16 to 9. And this is really annoying because you, you never get the 16 to 9 image you want to have. Okay, uh, the next issue, um, and uh, I didn't test it, this with the 664P, which I had, because um, already the advanced features were quite annoying and were faulty already. Um, I have here at F1 the crosshair, and as you can see here, wait a little bit, it's gone. Haha. <laughs> I mean, uh, what's the use of, of a, a function button you can assign for a crosshair, which is uh, vanishing after a few seconds? Hello. Uh, the funny thing is um, you can um, activate it here to on. By the way, um, this is the brightness, uh, this is the back button, this is the left, right and up, down button as you can see. And now I, sw I switched it to on and the funny thing is the F F1 is, 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 uh, is uh, lit, the button, and the crosshair is staying there. <laughs> so uh, it's only not working uh, as soon as you want to to use the function button, which is quite funny. Okay, um, another uh, fault is, and I, I um, it, uh, set the, I've set the VG30 to 1080i uh, output, 50i output, because this is only the case with the 50i, so with interlaced input. As soon as you get an interlaced input, and as soon as you want to use the pixel to pixel mode, and now watch, for example, here uh, at this windows here or so, uh, which, which are about uh, in the center, and as soon as you use the pixel-to-pixel -pixel mode, they are offset to the right. So you're not, um, you, you don't get a magnified center view with the pixel-to-pixel -pixel mode, which I have assigned to F3 here. Uh, you get a, 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 a crop of the left side of the image. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and this is only the case of, uh, the funny thing is that this is only the case with the ADI, 1080i input, for example, or with interlaced and input in general, which is problematic because many uh, cameras are outputting 50i. For example, the GH2 is outputting 50i, many camcorders are outputting 50i, and yeah, so it's quite annoying. And et voila, we are coming back to a full screen image. <laughs> okay, and a last time I will reset it. Okay, and yeah, so. There are quite um, a few issues. Uh, by the way, for example, I, at F2, I have now the zooming, which is working at least, I think, with center image. Uh, yes, it's working with, uh, with uh, it's zooming in the center, and we are at full screen again. Uh, and I also have here, for example, the, the freeze. But the problem is, and I don't want to try around now multiple times, the problem with the freeze feature is that it's sometimes um, uh, uh, outputting a black image because I don't know is there a, a, a error with the internal buffer or so. But um, 
it's not freezing at all. Especially if you want to, to if you want a pixel to pixel mode, if you are in the pixel to pixel or in the zoom mode, and if you want to freeze the image, for example, to I don't know, reposition something. Um, or to watch how it's looking um, uh, in pixel to pixel mode um, because you are in the picture and you want to go back to the monitor to check it. Um, it's not possible at all and this is quite annoying and uh, it's also kind of a fault which is uh, the case also by the way with the new 663 P2 models because the hardware base is the same. It's, uh, there's only new software installed with the P2 models and that's the problem. Also really, really annoying is the fact that um, you cannot calibrate these monitors because um, if, it it, if it was possible, for example, to adjust the sharpness, um, if, you, uh, if it was possible to, to, to get proper colors out of the screen, it's, it's maybe okay, you can maybe live with the, the problems, you can maybe live with a battery issue, with the sandpaper coating, uh, with the small software issues, um, with, the, with the funky scaling, uh, which is always the case, maybe also with the bleeding. But uh, if you don't get a proper image, it's, com it's for me personally, uh, these monitors are completely useless. And um, I mean, uh, this is, I think, the first review where I, I really um, do don't recommend a, a product. Uh, because, yeah, there are always a few small cons, a few small problems with, with devices, with uh, monitors, with uh, cameras, whatever you you take in your hand and, and uh, watch more closely. Um, but yeah, these monitors um, really, um, this is the first video where I definitely can say I cannot recommend the 663 and the 664 monitors. By the way, these, uh, this, this uh, especially this 663 monitor, the P2 edition, by the way, is also available from Niway. Uh, it's uh, there is uh, only the, the differences here is Niway printed, um, which I also don't recommend because Niway um, is using um, rebranded Lilliput monitors, and there there is even a higher risk that you don't get uh, the actual firmware, and it's even worse to 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 send it back because uh, you only get them I think directly from China, and with Lilliput you at least get it for example from Lilliput Direct Co UK for for the for Europe, European um, customers uh, you can send it at least back and and get your your refund uh, you don't pay import VAT import fees and you also get your mon monitor back faster so also the Niway uh, which is uh, selling under CL700X or so uh, how it's how it's called um, which is basically the 663 model also don't get this one because yeah, we, the issues are just too huge. Um, I hope, uh, by the way, you enjoyed this um, review. It's not a review, uh, basically, it's more of issues report. And I hope that I showed you why I'm not recommending this, uh, this screens. Um, and uh, according to the 664 model, by the way, um, yeah, it's, it's also on the same problem, uh, also uh, way oversaturated, also software issues on mass, also, um, uh, over sharpness, uh, the over sharpness error is the case. Also, the same scaling issues are the case. And also, by the way, the backlight bleeding was the same with the 664 model I had. Um, and I thought, yeah, well, it's, it's the plastic model. Maybe there is too much pressure on the LCD screen here, for example. But it's also the case here with this model. And so I'm quite disappointed. Um, by the way, if you have any questions or um, any hints, um, yeah, just send me a message or uh, place a, a feedback. Uh, if Lilliput is watching this and uh, if they're fixing these issues, um, yeah, I'm happy to make a new review, by the way. So just send me a fixed unit, a completely fixed unit, not only partly one. And yeah, I'm happy to make a new review. Also about the uh, 664 models. Okay, that's it more or less. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. By the way, stay tuned for the H056 review, which is also coming um, within the next few weeks, days, whatever. Um, if I have to, I find time to, to shoot um, the, this uh, the video and to cut it. And subscribe if you like. By the way, um, yeah, there will come a lot of um, more videos, or at least uh, they are planned a lot of more videos. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.